Libra. Happy Valentine's Day. This is your February love reading. So I'm going to look at couples and singles and then also um, if you're in between, you know, you're on again, off again. Maybe you're not Facebook official. You don't know what to call it. Maybe you're in a relationship with somebody who's married. Maybe you're polyamorous. Um, so I'm going to look at all of those different categories and I'll put it in the description box below where your time stamp is. I'm going to start with Couples. Okay. I don't know why. I think I started with um, singles for Leos and Pisces, but I'm just feeling really drawn to couples for Libra. Um, okay. So what they're saying is even though something's not being spoken or maybe something is not um, 100% honest communication-wise between you and your partner, things are actually really okay. Um, is this something that you need to bring to light? They said no, not if you're not feeling it. So Libras can be somewhat avoidant from time to time just because you don't want to stir the pot. This is one of those times and everything's going to be okay. So for example, if you... Um, are keeping something from your spouse and maybe they're starting to catch on to that, it's because you know that they would maybe have an overreaction to it or maybe you're planning a surprise party for them. <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody's situation is going to be different. But a typical, um, just kind of to assume that everything is for benevolent and loving reason. No, it might not be. Um, <laughs> however everything is going to be okay and everything is going to be comfortable and stable. So I wouldn't fret too much about this energy. What else is up for February with you and your partner? Um, again, this energy of balance and then just things starting to grow and get better, especially on the material front. Um, maybe one of you is going to get a promotion, earn more money. Uh, maybe you're just starting to be able to put money away to buy a car for, say, for you know, retirement, whatever. Um, but these are things that will actually create a very stable environment. So this is a good thing. Um, I wanted to check. I didn't start your reading the way that I did the other one. So I'm going to go backwards here for a second. So they're saying, you know, in the recent past, you kind of might not have been super open to receiving love in the way that your partner is trying to give it to you. So, you know, for example, if their love language is physical touch and you weren't feeling well, some people when they're sick, they want to be touched all the time. Other people are like, stop fucking touching me, right? So, um... That's the recent past. There's this some. There was just some sort of a block where you weren't able to like fully feel any of the love that your um, some of the love that your partner was trying to give you. However, now things are much more um, back to normal, and there's this huge fo focus on earth energy type things: money, home, car, possessions, stuff like that. Now moving into the future, the um, all the way through February towards the end of March, they're saying make sure though that some of that earthy type of energy, some of those financial resources that are coming to you by way of either, you know, surprise discounts, um, finding money on the ground, you know, promotions, like I said, that you're spending that on yourself. This is um, a time for you to spend time, you don't necessarily need to do this with your partner, but you need to put yourself first and foremost. If you're dedicating a lot of time and energy to your partner that will actually hurt your relationship this month, this month is all about self-focus because otherwise you don't have the strength to kind of um, move and shift through these changes that are actually super positive, but you might be a little bit grumpy. You might be a little bit irritable if you're not able to do that. Now, as far as your partner's side of things, that will vary because every single Libra is in a relationship with a different type of partner. You might want to cross watch and um, kind of look at their signs, love reading to see what's going on with their energy. Uh, they're saying the thing is that this month in your relationship, you not, might not be feeling a million percent confident and um, especially in regards to your sexual relationship, you might have some feelings of um, doubt. It might be one of those months where you're just like, oh, I don't feel like very pretty. My skin is a wreck. Like I feel fat. Like I'm bleh. Um, and this is why that whole concept of making sure that you're taking some of those resources and spending it on yourself so that you feel good about yourself so that your relationship can have a stronger sexual component to it, more attraction, um, is going to be very, very helpful for you. Is there anything else that couples need to know in February?
And they just say, this is a month where really deep emotional bonding and connection can occur, where your relationship can kind of go from this place where it's like average, you know what to expect, to all of a sudden really, really connecting on a deep emotional level, falling back in love with your partner. So how do we foster that? What is the key action word here? And they're saying... Um, the power of the human spirit will not be restricted. So, you know, where are you maybe resisting that energy flow? Some of you might still, remember how I talked about the recent past, how maybe you're not interpreting loving energies, or maybe they're just not showing you love the way that you like to be shown it, or maybe you're resisting it. If they say, hey, come here and cuddle, and you're like, no. I'm just not in the mood right now. Like right after you've had an argument, right, that didn't have a full resolution. That could be that sort of a thing. Um, that resistance energy is not something that you want to continue in. You want to kind of try to figure out how can I open up my heart, be more receptive. And that might also be a part of this communication problem as well, where something's not being said or where somebody's um, somewhat hiding certain things, and not for a mean reason or anything. It's not malicious. It's just more because they want to protect you from something. So like I said, you know what, you might be feeling a little bit more irritable. Try to release that energy so that you're more able to indulge in this, to create that deeper bond and connection so you can fall back in love with your partner, so you can feel better about your relationship as well as yourself. Um, very, very important. So you're typically really, really good at, um, you know, if this isn't going to matter a year from now, is it even something I bring up? But if there's just this sort of energy where subtly there's certain nuances either in your body language or the things that you say that are kind of giving your partner the impression that you don't necessarily want them around you all the time. And some of that might even be from that, like, I just don't feel particularly you know, sexy or attractive or um, content right now. So is there anything else that coupled Libras need to know? And they're just like, it's hard to find that enthusiasm once it's gone. And so that whole aspect of um, really doing whatever you have to for yourself in order to spark that back up, it seems to me that that deeper bond and connection is going to come less through communication this month, which is where you're usually going to find that, um, and more through the physical aspects of showing love. So, um, you know, buying yourself some new lingerie, it doesn't matter what it costs, it's worth it for your relationship this month, kind of an energy, okay? Um, whatever makes you feel good, happy, confident, whatever's going to help you kind of get that, um, get your sexy back. <laughs> okay, so single Libras, what's up? It looks to me like kind of the same energy that couples had here where you're not feeling 100% you know, sexy and excited or even horny or passionate, that drive isn't necessarily there. Um, they're saying, but for you, for them, it was more about, I just need to do something that makes me feel good again, like um, about myself, about my image, you know, whether that's buying sexy lingerie, getting your nails done, getting your hair done, whatever, it doesn't matter what it costs, that's what they needed to do. Now for you, a lot of this is based on your history, on your past, on relationships previous or current, you know, kind of dating experiences and what's popping up for you with that. They say that right now, you know, you're feeling like, okay, there's just not a lot of options out there. Like I know I could make a dating profile on Tinder and if I want to get boned, you know, there's people out there who want to have sex with me, but they're just not like right for me or I'm not into them or whatever it is. And so what they're saying with this is, you know, it's, it's a twofold thing. Yes, that is certainly true. There are going to be people out there that you're just not into, okay? But it's also not a reason to stop looking for somebody that you'd be into and to really feel excited about meeting that person in the right time and in the right way. Because what you're doing now by kind of saying, mm, 
Um, I don't even know if I'm going to find anybody like that. Like, I'm just not horny at all. I'm not in the mood. So if you're trying to manifest love into your life and you're not excited to meet that person, you're putting out a resistance energy to the universe, which makes them bring it to you slower if they bring it to you at all. And so they're saying you do kind of get to control this um, a little bit. So, you know, our bodies, psychology follows physiology. So when we smile a lot, like if you have to smile for your job, at the end of the day, you're going to feel better just because you went to work. Like maybe you're, um, I don't know what you'd do or you'd have to be smiling a lot. Maybe you are a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, you're going to feel really good. Um, Maybe you work in customer service, so it's your job to smile a lot. Maybe you're a motivational speaker, so you're going to look at people and you are going to give them like a very positive kind of energy, and then that comes back to you. But not only is their energy mirroring you and making you feel good, you know, because smiles are contagious, um, but our physiology does change our psychology. And so a simple trick when you're feeling kind of down is to put your hands up. Okay, because when do we put our hands up? Yay, I'm so excited. You know, like everybody's seen those woo girls that walk into the club, woo, I'm here. But who's having the most fun? I mean, yeah, she kind of looks like a douche, but you know what? She's having more fun than you if you're sitting there judging her, right? So um, when you're starting to feel kind of like, ugh, you just go, ah. Okay, so it's like, yay, today is the day that I am going to, you know, ABC. <laughs> That might help. Also, um, if any of these reasons why you're not feeling particularly sexy or um, in the mood, it also, like for females especially, you put your hands up like this, it slims out your whole body. It makes your boobs look bigger and higher, and then you feel better about it. <laughs> There's a quick little life hack right there. Um, so I know typically, Libras, you're... Reading is not specifically like super sexually fueled. This month it is, and it's really, really an important aspect. If whatever you need to do to kind of get your groove back with that, I think that's very, very important for you. I, If you are like a Libra with a lot of Leo in your chart, it's going to be very important for you to actually physically dance. Dancing is a good way to kind of help with all of that as well. Okay, so... Looking at the recent past and then kind of moving forward, here's the deal. So, you know, things from last month into the beginning of February now, they don't seem like they really changed very much. And you're kind of just like, ugh, you know, in the dating world. So right now you're kind of in this energy of like, I don't really want to talk to anyone. Maybe I just need to resolve to this like thinking that I'll forever be alone. That's not going to help you. You do want to continue to think about the things that you want as far as a partner goes and what kind of relationships you want moving forward. Um, and then going into the future, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to have to settle. But the thing is, is that there's something here that a lot of you are missing that is sort of creating a resistance energy. Now, a very common one, and I don't mean to, like, make this female-centric, even though I think, like, 82% of my clients are female. <laughs> uh, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because one common thing is, like, women might try to manifest a man into their life, okay? But they are divorced and they have children. So they continue to say things like, I'm a single mom. Okay, so yeah, I made a vision board. I've decided all of these things that I want. Like I'm working on actively manifesting this partner that I desire. I wrote down all of these things and I'm feeling joy when I'm reading the list and they're still not coming and like, what the fuck? And the reason why is because you're saying I'm a single mom. You are identifying, you are saying like as a part of my identity, I am single. I'm a mom and I am doing it on my own. And this is who I physically am. Therefore, if you're hoping to manifest a partner who's going to come into your life and be helpful, they'll probably cohabitate with you. It's now a two-household income instead of a one-household income. Um, they're going to pick up the kids from school, make breakfast, like whatever. It's going to be a team if that's what you're trying to manifest. You are resisting that because it's not in alignment with who you say you physically 
um, are at your core. At my who I am is a single mom. I do it myself. Therefore, if no matter what you do to try to manifest this person that you want as a co, um, as a team teammate, what do they say? Like a I was gonna say a co something, like a co parent maybe, like a step parent kind of energy. Um, somebody who doesn't like completely pretend like your children don't exist. You're not going to be able to attract that. And so that's what they're saying is like a a lot of this has to do with some things that you haven't thought about in terms of communication, what you're saying, what you're thinking. Um, and so, I mean, it's kind of a mind fuck, right? Because you're like, how am I supposed to think about something that I don't even know that I haven't thought about? <laughs> hmm. uh, for everybody, it might be a little bit different. Um, but basically, they say as a general theme, what are the lies that you're telling yourself, telling the universe, and um, telling people that you meet, you know? So you might say all day, I'm a really positive person, and then when your friends call on the phone, they're like, hey, how was your day? And you're like, just listing all this negative shit. <laughs> but, you know, you're expressing gratitude internally. <laughs> so things like that. It's, I'm not saying that any of you are hypocritical. That's not the vibe or the energy that I get, and I don't feel like this is an intentional um, lie that you're telling yourself. But I do think that some of you are just maybe expressing something either with your body language, either verbally, spiritually, um, energetically, that is not in alignment with who you are. And so we've got to start, you know, every time we, we have to be thinking about monitoring our thoughts. So we can't control what we think, but we can control the thoughts that we adopt and we move forward with. And so when you think that, when you're like, oh, well, I'm really busy, I'm a single mom, for example, you instead would go, actually, I make time for people, as difficult as that is, that seem like it's worth it for me, right? Um, I am a mother looking for a partner. Better, right? Okay, so what is your action word here? And they say readiness. You see how she's putting her hand out there like she's ready to receive something? She's ready to receive something from God, the universe, angels, whatever. She's like, okay, here we go. Ready to receive it. I'm going to clear my mind, and I'm going to expect the unexpected, and it's going to be positive. Okay? That's the energy that you want to be in. And so in terms of potentially meeting a soulmate or a life partner, um, is that likely to happen for the majority of Libras this month? And they're saying, well, wait, you know, maybe not this month. Maybe it will be the case for some of you this month. But this sword, swords are about knowledge. They're about our thinking. They are about um, what we communicate, you know, not only to each other, to ourselves, but then to the universe or God or whatever. They're saying you have to spiritualize this. You've got to stop and you've got to think about what am I communicating. Okay? So, um... It'll be variable. Those of you who follow that guidance, who really get at, like, the core of what this is and take the steps to change it, more likely that you'll find your partner. Okay. And then for those of you who are um, un, un uh, uh, categoric, wait, who are undefined, right? Let's just call it undefined. I was going to say uncategorized, uncategorizable. Is that even a word? Doesn't matter. Point is, um, this is for that relationship that is maybe a relationship, maybe it isn't, or you don't know what to call it. Um, lots of shit here for you. So straight out the gate, they're like, things are slow. Very, very slow. Painfully slow. Um, they're saying you're feeling confident about things based on your past history with this person and things seem like they're becoming more stable, but it's happening very slowly. So things are maybe moving towards becoming more of an official couple or um, kind of defining the terms of this or whatever, but very, very, very slowly, however you are feeling good about it this month. Similar energy to both the coupled and the single um, uh, Libras, the thing is, 
is that this is less about finding your confidence, but it is about self-care, taking time to really care for yourself in whatever way you tend to do that. Whether, you know, it's taking time out for yourself just to read a book, whether that's taking a long bath, whether that's, you know, buying that laundry, like I said, for those that are coupled or um, whatever. Self-care, super important in regards to the trajectory of this relationship. They're saying because... Because things are moving and progressing so fucking slowly and that's starting to bug you, um, you're starting to lose not your love, not your attraction, but your strength in order to sustain whatever is happening here. So you're happy in certain ways because you're finally getting things that you want slowly but surely, but like, oh my gosh, it's still painful, right? So... Um, looking at the recent past, it seems like there were some little wins here in this relationship. Things were going really good. Um, and then now, currently, there's not really any drama and things are starting to move and shift and balance out the way that you want them to. I think moving forward, perspectives are going to change. Thought patterns are going to change. And then there is this sort of deeper bonding and connection, this deepening of love between you and this person or deepening of, um, you know, just kind of care and good feels. They're saying, though, um, this is not a time to really go out of the way to verbally express how you're feeling. Um because when you're doing this a lot, even though it's awesome to tell people we love them, and typically that is the case that you should do that all the time. I love you, I love you, I love you, reminding people, right? Because you're just opening up your heart chakra and um, raising the vibration for yourself and for other people. But they're saying in this specific situation, um, actually what can happen is it can slow down the process that you're waiting for. Whatever it is that's moving too slow, whether that's, you know, saying, okay, now we're finally exclusively dating. Now we're Facebook official. Now, you know, Brad is going to leave his wife finally and be with me. Now we're going to move in together. Um, now we're going to, because we're back and forth, seek you know, relationship therapy together, um, or whatever your specific case is. The fact of the matter is right now, if you're communicating a lot about, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you, it's creating this energy for your partner in which their side of trying to speed things up or moving things in that direction where they have been slowly heading, all of a sudden it's like a free pass to not work as hard. And that's the issue. If you're continually like, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, I'm so thankful that you do this, this, this. This is all really important stuff to do, um, usually. But in the month of February, this is like saying, oh, well, taking your time, like, I guess that's okay. And it's kind of creating this scenario in which you're sort of looked at like a doormat a little bit. And so to create better balance and to get the things that you want, I mean, even though there's signs showing you're starting to get what you want and things are starting to move and shift to get them faster, that's kind of the way to do that is to stop verbally expressing it. Now, it doesn't say you don't do it through, you know, show, um, showing them acts of kindness. You know, maybe you pack them a lunch before they go to work um, with a little love note in there. Maybe you fill up their car with gas. Maybe you buy them a gift or um, you do something really sexy for them. But verbally expressing it is kind of creating this atmosphere of passivity on their side. So just something for you to know. Now, um, what is the energy or um, action word for you? And they say, holding up your own inner light as an inspiration to all around you is very important. So this is interesting to me because based on the February reading for couples and for singles, those of you who are in an on-again, off-again type of situation or an undefined relationship actually have the best luck and love this month. And so they're saying if you are able to kind of just like stand up and just show love to the world, um, except for verbally to your partner, <laughs> as well, I mean, they don't say no, ever do it, just not as much, um, then this is like an inspiration for other people, which means like other people come into the past. So imagine, you know, they use the word beacon, like a lighthouse is shining, a beacon of light out. And so what this does is it draws other people to you 
and it helps everybody falls in love with a Libra everybody anyway right but it helps bring people to you that will be loving and kind and so like maybe good friendships are coming your relationships can deepen and bond like outside of your actual relationship but also within it and so um you know your self self esteem is going to be higher than that of other libras because people are recognizing your light and they're saying hey I really notice this about this person. I really like this about them. You're super great. And so you're going to be feeling good about yourself. <laughs> but um, if you're not feeling good about yourself, remember that the easiest way to increase your own happiness is to do something kind or loving for somebody else. So that's February. I love you. and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!